With the face-off in the People's Democratic Party and other political events leading to the 2023 elections, the governors in the South-South state areas are yet to meet with and review activities within the region. The Director General of the Bayelsa uh, Rivers Aquaibom Cross River Edo and Delta Commission, Ambassador Joe Keshi, said due to variations and bitterness of the succession politics in some states in the area, the governors that emerged from the 2015 normal elections could not meet to discuss the Bielsa, Rivers, Aquaibom, Cross River, Edo, and Delta fee being neglected. Well, joining us to discuss this is Ken Robinson. He is the National Publicity Secretary, PANDEF, uh, which is Pan Niger Delta Forum. Thank you so much, Mr. Robinson. It's so good to have you here. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's, and we, we thank you for this opportunity Great. to speak to these issues. Thank you. Let's look at what um, Ambassador Joe Keshi is referring to. Um, so I'll just put it blatantly. What is the problem within the Niger Delta state and, of course, the governors? Um, is there some form of bitterness, as he said? Is there any truth to it? The Niger Delta region is a peculiar region in Nigeria. If you go to this, the southeast, um, they understand themselves. That's in terms of language. If you go to the southwest, they understand themselves across the southwest, from Ondo to Lagos to Oyo. They understand themselves to a large extent in terms of language. And across northern Nigeria, uh, to a large extent, from Tsukutu to Borono State, they understand themselves. In the Niger Delta, within six states, there is so much diversity in terms of language, and it's a problem that we've had so far. And it's, it's one of the responsibilities that Pandev has given to itself to see how, in spite of our diversity, how we can work together as a people, mm. because the problems we are confronted with are common. According I said that, yeah. Go ahead. There is common knowledge that uh, people say politics is a game of interest, and uh, we we see this happening across Nigeria, where people project and elevate their personal political interests um, above the common or shared interests of their people, and this is uh, perhaps has been taken to the extreme in the Niger Delta. And it is not just new, it has been our story. And we hope that our politicians, our political leaders, will rise above their personal political interests and consider the interests of the region and the people um, more than what they tend to gain in terms of political advancement. Well, let, let's, let's talk about... Um, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry to talk over you. Now, I want to go to what the commission was established for. The commission was established essentially to foster economic cooperation and integration among South-South states. The main objective, as we know, is, was uh, to create sustainable zone for economic development with the capacity to create employment and prosperity. But so far, politics, like you said, has come between us. And of course, you've talked about the language barrier, but... There's so much in the Niger Delta. There's so much potentials to be harnessed, but then we've not even been able to scratch the surface. Apart from a few states who might be doing so well, maybe the likes of Rivers and Aquaibom, the same cannot be said for the rest of the state. So why can't governors band together, if not for anything, for economic purposes? We, 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 we cannot uh, stop to re-emphasize and uh, stress on the issue that they, 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 we work together, we are better working together than working as individual states. If the South South six uh, states of, of Nigeria are working together, the governors are working together as people with common problems, uh, it's certain that um, our, our economic and political and even uh, uh, social state would have been different. Now, Bray's Commission, as you rightly said, was established to uh, uh, foster economic uh, cooperation and integration. Uh, unfortunately, as, as uh, the DG of Brace Commission has said, that uh, this has not been happening. Uh, the fact remains that we need to call on our, our political leaders to understand that we are a people and we are confronted with uh, the same problems across the Niger Delta from Cross River State to Edo State. As we speak today, it's difficult for 
uh, commuters to drive uh, from from smoothly from Wari to Bini. It's also difficult to uh, get yourself from Uyo to uh, Cross River State. The same thing in some sections of the East West Road in River State from the, the uh, Elimit Junction in Port Harcourt to the Onet Junction is, is terrible. And this, this situation, that's just one of the issues. But if we work together and we've asked ourselves, why can't the six states of the South South cooperate and build a superhighway from, from Calabar to, to Edo State? And whatever we want to do with that road, it's our road, it's our resources, and we can do that. Unfortunately, politics has, has been cited, has been elevated, political interests. Uh, where next should I be? Political supremacy. Uh, who should be in control of, 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 the, of the South South? Who should be the political leader of the South South? Not just in the PDP. That happens also in the APC. And we have seen party members, political party leaders uh, in the same party uh, fighting supremacy battles uh, to the detriment of the people of the Niger Delta. But, but let me emphasize that uh, your, your tag here says leadership deficit crisis. It's, it's not just about the Niger Delta. Nigeria has a leadership crisis. The problems of Nigeria are leadership problems. And until we get leadership right, we might not be able to uh, resolve the crisis uh, in the Niger Delta as well as in the larger Nigeria. Interestingly, you, you actually led me into my next question. Um, it's, it's one thing for us to say that the country in, as, as a whole has bad leadership, but then the government that is closest to us, our governors, our local government um, heads, uh, our national um, state assembly you know, uh, members. So let's, let's, let's start from home before we get to the national. Um, if our governors who took an oath to represent us, to protect, to serve us, to make our lives a lot better by creating avenues or laws or whatever it is to make our lives easier. I'm not doing that, but you also talked about political interest. Um, I think I'm wondering, should the people in the states not be holding these so-called leaders to some level of responsibility? I mean, do we really realize how much power that we wield as a people? Again, as the Niger Delta, we're a region that has been bedeviled by all spillage, environmental degradation, et cetera, et cetera. The list is endless. Why are we still quiet about this and just pointing fingers at these so-called leaders? We, we, could, we could make all the noise that we could make. We could say all that we want to say. Uh, for us in Pandev, uh, it's strategic for us not to be involved in the crisis within the leadership crisis within the Niger Delta region, particularly that the differences between the governors. What we can do as leaders and fathers of the Niger Delta region is to see how we can talk to these people to, to put their differences aside and work towards the interest, the overall interest of the Niger Delta people. But when you talk about you know, monitoring and uh, taking the responsibility to say, look, you're not doing this right, you're not doing that right, it becomes difficult because the Nigerian political system, particularly the constitution that we operate with, has reduced, reduced the citizens to spectators in their own country. The, the governors, as we have always said, are like demigods, and the president of Nigeria is like the god of Nigeria. And, and you, you can see that even if a national assembly goes against the president of Nigeria in ways and manners that the presidency uh, do not fashion, the next election uh, circle, you will see uh, some, some of those senators that we are seeing as troublemakers not returning to the National Assembly. Uh, and it's the same with the state assemblies. The state assemblies across Nigeria are, are like total, are under the total control of the governors. Hmm. And, and that's why for us in Pandev, it, it, it's the restructuring of the country. It's the rejigging of the political system and ensuring that political institutions are strengthened. The, the legislature is strengthened to be independent to the extent that they could do their oversight functions. Uh, so that there will be proper check and balances in the political system to strengthen our democracy, to reduce the powers of the, of the executive. We've had some governors of states say, I have enormous powers. You, you don't know the kind of powers that I have. And we can't you know, function as, as a proper society in that kind of a system. And we've, we've said before now that even if you, you bring an angel into Nigeria and give him those kind of uh, 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 awesome uh, outstanding, outrageous powers. It will take uh, some extra superhuman forces to ensure that you don't abuse them and, and try to make yourself an emperor of a state or uh, emperor of a country. 
I want to I want to re retreat my question. You did say something about the fact that these governors become a demigod of sorts, and you just talked about you know being an emperor of sorts. But these people are made by certain people. Who makes them? Who gives them the power? I, I, I can hear you in my head saying, well, I mean, these people take the power. But then I'm imagining the number of people who we, called our lead, we call our leaders in this country, um, they're just a, a tiny min minority compared to the people who follow them. Does this not cause for us to look within us and re be, reevaluate re our position as citizens of this country if a handful of people can tell us this is what they want and they go ahead and do it with reckless abandon should we not be worried and reevaluate within ourselves don't don't forget we're getting ready for campaign season and the election is just around the corner how do we go into a next election cycle with this kind of mentality we're hoping that the next set of people that we merge will the people that would elevate uh, their, their dispositions of, of nationality and patriotism to extreme levels. And that there will be people that would suppress their personal interests and desires and political um, uh, advancement. Uh, you, you get to a level in, in, in life when you begin to tell yourself, look, what is, what is all this about? We, we look back at those who have been governors of various states and what are their lives today? Uh, if, if they are not celebrated, their people. So, so it, it's, it's about human behavior. It's, it's about self, and we call it self-intervention. Self you telling yourself, look, let's make things differently. And it starts with, of course, all of us Nigerians, that in the next coming elections, people will be able to say, look, this is the Nigeria that we want. These are the kind of leaders that we want. But as, as I've said always, and we'll continue to say that, we have a system that is faulty. And, and so when you, you make a king, the king becomes the king, and the king makers are subjects of the king. And, and if the king is not well prepared, is not cultured, is not refined, is not pro properly, uh, properly mannered, he becomes an emperor, he becomes a demigod, and everybody is his slave as, as it were. And that's what we see in some of the states. And, and that is what the governors, some governors, let me, let me not say all the governors, some governors have continued to demonstrate. In the South South, there is the supremacy battle. Who, who is the king maker? Who is the lord of the lords? Who is the governor of governors? Uh, and so people are resisting. Some are saying, I want to be the governor of governors. Others, are, are, people are lining to, to various positions. And, and the complexity of, of the situation is that for us, uh, uh, Pandev and some of us, we are also taking positions because of the overall interests of the country and the Niger Delta region, particularly concerning the presidency of Nigeria, uh, as we have always said that in 2023, based on the fundamental principle of our rotation between the North and the South, the next president of Nigeria should come from Southern Nigeria. Mm. Let's talk about this, the politics of, of this, because right now, I, I was just having a conversation earlier today, and I said, if you turn to every single part of this country, there's something that's going wrong. We're having issues with, uh, that are laced with tribal sentiments. I mean, it seems the election um, that we're getting ready for is somewhat, the political parties have decided to take, you know, positions, zonal positions, you know, so one party, party A is for the South, party B is for uh, the Southeast, uh, party C is for the North, you know. But again, we also are dealing with issues of insecurity. We're dealing with um, issues of, um, you know, the economy. We're seeing I mean, the oil theft in the Niger Delta and other parts of the country has led to that 40-something billion uh, Naira contract with Tom Polo. There's so many issues that are bedeviling us around the country right now. But then we still stoop to support these same people who are one way or the other part of the problem. So again, I want to ask. What is Pan Niger Delta Forum doing in the Niger Delta to one way or the other change the mindsets of people? Again, like you said, language can be a barrier. But first, do we see ourselves as Nigerians as opposed to what language you speak or where you come from or what political party that you support? First of all, um, Pandev is pushing the idea that we, we could be robots, we could be just the Shekirish, the Bibios, and, and all of that, the Ogonis. But first of all, we are Niger Delta people. 
But the fact has to be said that I'm a Nigerian because I'm from River State, because I'm an German, because I'm from Klabari, and, and that's what makes me a Nigerian. And if I, I were situated in some other part of the world, I wouldn't have been a Nigerian except perhaps by nationalization. Mm. So, so first of all, I am who I am, where I am from. I am a, a Nigerian because I'm from River State. I'm, I'm in River State because I come from a community situated, located in River State. But does that not complicate uh, so, the issue? Because you see, again, these are... I've spoken to many people, political scientists, who have said that because of these ethnic divisions or in a bid for us to say, oh, I'm an indigent of this and that, politicians take advantage of it and continue to widen those gaps. And then we keep seeing ourselves as this and that, as opposed to being Nigerians, having one particular motive, which is to grow our economy and no. to make Nigeria a better place. I completely disagree. The problem we have here is the mismanagement of our differences. Our differences, our complexity should be a blessing because we, we, we bring several uh, positives to the table that should be managed properly. And, and let me say that every crisis is, is, is as a result of the mismanagement of interest. All that we are having in, this, in, the, in the Northwest, what we are having experiencing in the, in the Southeast in the, in the northeast, in the north central, in the southwest of Nigeria, are results of mismanagement of interest by leaders of Nigeria. Okay. If we know that we are different people who, by circumstances, have been brought together to be part of a country called Nigeria, and we manage our diversity and our complexities to the extent that we cannot satisfy everybody but reasonably, then some of this crisis will not exist. Okay. Yesterday, I was in an engagement with officials of the Dutch embassy in Nigeria. And I, was, I made an illustration that we are six on the table, and if food is served, and only three persons on the table continue to eat, and the next time food is served, those three persons eat, and others don't eat, we keep washing, a point will come when we decide to break the plate. Hmm. And that's what's happening in Nigeria. Okay. Well, we're hoping that these lines can be blurred, hopefully, before the elections, or we can see that these differences do not necessarily negate the fact that we're all Nigerians and we all hope for one thing to happen, and which is unity. Well, Ken Robinson is the National Publicity Secretary of Pan Niger Delta Forum, PANDEF. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much, Plus TV. Thank you for the wonderful job you're doing. Great. All right. We appreciate it. Well, before we go on the show tonight, I will give you my take. Here's my take. Now, all is fair in love and war. At least that's what the saying, you know, that's how the saying goes. But interestingly, the court conspicuously leaves out the battles fought in the political arena because it is often said that politics is a dirty game and political rivals are allowed to go after each other in any way short of you know, criminal behavior. Sometimes, even at the risk of wasting judicial resources, you know, opponents will go after each other legally um, you know, over dubious positions that serve as nothing more than political theater meant to distract. If facts are what you seek about a candidate, the last place you'd ever find that is in your opponent. Yet, when it comes to the rules of what passes for an acceptable campaign, even the Independent National Electoral Commission, a body that ought to be impartial, fails to live up to delivering these facts. It is a known fact that the incumbent party sets the rules of engagement in an election. So trust when I say fairness is the least of their objectives in setting those rules. Well, something for you to think about. I am Mary Anacle, and it's been Plus Politics. I'll see you tomorrow on the show. Stay with us.